Hello, welcome back to the Black Sky Ranch. My name is Leo, and this is the second part of A Beginner's Guide to the Apocalypse. It's really the, just the second half of the first part. We recorded it all at once and then cut it in half for time purposes. So if you haven't seen part one, go watch that first and then come back and watch this one. And then after that, stay tuned for more. Thanks. Hey, the fanny pack. These were all the raids back in the 80s. This is a new one. They're starting to come back in style. Um, this one is black. My other one, I have multiple ones, but the one I was using for this roll was Coyote Tan. And since I have it with me all the time and carry it all the time, it started to kind of get stained and grungy looking. So I switched over to black. I'm using the other one to hold ammunition. So... There's plenty of these on the market nowadays. We'll just start with what's on it. The, um, get it on. I don't usually wear it around my waist. We usually wear it like this. I found that with this I can get to it um, and I can wear a backpack over it. It doesn't interfere at all and I have access to all this stuff. So the um, this is one of the uh, strap cutter, clothing cutter. I'm not, not saying that this is something that I recommend everybody carry. Um, it just, I had it. It fits nicely on this strap. I have multiple of them. I figured why not since I carry this with me when I do fire and ambulance stuff. Um, it's more professional use stuff, but it's a handy thing. This is not a toy carabiner, actually. It looks like one of those cheap toy ones, but um, this one is rated for 150 kilograms. So it's actually a serious piece of gear. And so this little carabiner, it just, it's just utility for whatever I need to hang on there. A lot of times um, I'll hang my water bottle on it. Not the most comfortable thing. It, it kind of flops around, but if um, I'm just, need to temporarily put my water bottle somewhere I can hang it there. I'm gathering all my gear out of my car and bringing it into the house or over to the ambulance. I can hook it there for now. Um, I don't usually keep it there though. As you can see, I tied a little string around it and the little bale that holds the cap from getting lost is missing. That's because people use that little thing to hang it by and eventually it breaks. So I learned my lesson. Now all my water bottles have a string on it. So we'll just start at the front. And see what's in here. First thing that comes out is a little store-bought pre-manufactured tinder. This is that sort of wax impregnated fiber that you pull apart, tease it out, and then it'll catch fire from a spark from your ferrocene rim rod. This is a, a little beeswax candle in a jar. So it's beeswax with a wick. Um, what happens with these, especially when you have something in your car a lot where it gets warm, Eventually the beeswax melts. When it gets hot, it gets into the threads. Um, and then when it solidifies, it's really hard to open up. Uh, just something to be aware of. It may be hard to get open when you need it. Um, but I can get it open and I do have pliers. And it's just beeswax and a, and a wick. This one here is um, one of those ExoTac ones. But I'd hate to have to try to get that out in an emergency. I guess you could heat it up first and you get it open. So maybe not the best for this kind of kit. But uh, you decide. Here I just kind of got a mess of stuff. Here's another lighter. These things are cheap and easy to carry. And this one I've gotten really serious about. Not only does it have inner tube around here to keep it from getting activated, but I got a little twist tie of wire that's jammed below the little lever so that it definitely can't get 
um, depressed accidentally inside my kit. I also taped a bit of string on it. Um, a lot of times these things have, don't work well when it gets really cold. And um, you can hang that around your neck and uh, stick it inside your shirt to keep warm. And it's just easier to fish out of your pocket when it's got a string on it. Keeps everything kind of together. This little aluminum capsule has some cotton balls in it, but they're, that's not fire starting stuff, although I could use it for that. It's really just to cushion my two naproxen tablets. So I like, when I do medication, I like to have 24 hours worth in, in these smaller kits. Um, so naproxen, you take one every 12 hours. Um, it's for joint pain, knee pain. I have bad knee, a bad knee, so I use it for knee pain. But any kind of pain, um, non-narcotic, one pill lasts 12 hours, so I have two pills. So 24 hours worth. That way I can't take too many by mistake. And then the old fashioned, they used to call this a match safe. Match case, it's like designed by marbles back in the 100 years ago or more. Um, and the reason I carry this isn't so much for the strike anywhere matches, though those can be useful. Um, it's mainly so that I can carry a sewing needle if I can get this thing open. My hands are cold. That's another thing about this. You want to make you get stuff you can open up. All right, so it's got strike anywhere matches, but the reason I carry it is because I want to be able to carry a needle for repairing things, uh, digging out splinters, lancing boils. Um, and I also have a little birthday candle. Again, when you're trying to get a fire started under less than ideal conditions, having a, a, having a little candle like this, and I mean, you might even carry two or three of them in here. Uh, would probably be a good idea. But that's what that's for. I don't know if you can hear those dogs howling, but it's that time of day when neighbors' dogs all start yowling. All right, that's that. Again, orange cord, very handy. Oh look, more orange cord. So here's kind of the spare Swiss Army knife. Um, and this one, it's not only a spare, but it also it's a little different than the one in my pocket because it does have the um, Phillips screwdriver attachment and um and it also has a little saw and that can come in handy as well and this one has the toothpick and the, and the tweezers now as i was saying i the reason i don't just carry this one instead of the aluminum handle one is because this all is just not as good although this one has a hole in it so you can use it as a sewing needle for large kind of sewing stuff but um, but it's kind of a spare but it also has some additional um, utility i have a little carborundum sharpening stone i just keep it in a in a baggie just because it's abrasive and i don't want it you know uh, scraping up everything else that's in the pouch with it very small I can't believe we're still in just the outside little pouch. There's a flashlight. And that's the, the charger, in case you're in a place where you can have access to power. Um, and this one, very tiny. Again, this is kind of a backup flashlight. Um, the thing I like about it, again, it's rechargeable, but also you can lock it out. This particular one, you hit it twice. And um, of course, you turn it off, and you hit the button twice, and it blinks twice, and that tells you it's locked. So then if this gets hit by mistake, um, it'll blink twice and stop. So if you won't get turned on and stay on in your pocket. You can also swing the uh, little pocket clip over the uh, button 
and that makes it even harder for that thing to get pushed by mistake. And I said this was my backup light because I, when I was going through my pockets, I forgot my regular light. So there's that, it's bigger. Um, and I, I like this particular model because it uses either those um, CR123 batteries, which are kind of expensive and but super bright, or you can use just a, a double A. So it's a good all-around flashlight. Of course, it's got all the, you know, the flashy and the strobe and all that and different power levels, which I don't have that much use for, but um, it's the one I carry every day. Um, and it's easy to, easy to find batteries for it when it runs out. So anyway, and the last thing in this pouch is a little tin with some serious tweezers in it. Picking splinters, I don't know why I got a thing about splinters. I guess because I, as a former carpenter, was always picking splinters out. But um, in the apocalypse, you want to pick your splinters out. You don't want to get infections. Um, and these are stainless steel, and they got a real fine point, and uh, pulling also ticks. You get a tick, you want to pull it out by the head. Um, you need to be able to take care of yourself. Um, also, if you're an eyebrow plucker, you can always use it for that. Um, I've got a, a pair of, of the foam earplugs in here as well, both as a spare pair of earplugs, but also because I can't stand the way this thing rattles around inside this metal container. So I kind of jam it in there with these um, foam earplugs to keep it from rattling. So it rattles a little bit. So that's everything in one pouch, and I'm going to put it all back because I don't want to get everything all mixed up and forget what I got out of what pouch. And But I'm going to hold this out, this beeswax, because I want to try to thaw it out and clean those threads and see if I can figure out a way to, to mitigate that in the future. So we'll work on that. Okay, the main pouch. First thing is a headlamp. Now we'll see as we go through and get to the higher levels that I, I like headlamps and I, and I end up I like to have two. Um, so there's one in this kit, and there's going to be one in every other kit I have. This one, however, has the batteries installed. Um, that can be bad. I think the reason that the other day that this one was dead, because it probably got turned on by mistake and um, killed the batteries. But the reason I want them installed is because when I need it, I need it, and I don't want to be out there in the dark messing around with little batteries. Um, so it's kind of like a ready, ready to go. Other ones that are in, that are in the larger kits, I'll keep the batteries separate. I'll usually put them in a little sandwich bag or something and keep them out because a lot of times you'll go back to the bag after not being in it for six months or a year and the batteries will, will have exploded and there's acid everywhere. So I like to keep the batteries out. Salt and pepper is not a survival requirement. It's just a luxury, but again, I mentioned the wedding I was at the other day at the reception. For whatever reason, there was no salt. There was not any salt in the entire building. Um, so bring your own salt. It also has pepper because there's a place for it. Uh, I don't really use pepper, but um, you never know. But not a requirement, just kind of a, a little luxury item to keep me happy. This is a teeny beanie baby. Again, maybe not a requirement to survive, but you never know when you may have to comfort a child, just cheer yourself up. Um, I started carrying, a, somebody gave me this and it was small enough to fit in this kit. Um, but I actually, I've always, for many years since my military medic days and my SWAT medic days, have carried a Beanie Baby 
in my medical kit, more or less kind of as a joke and a morale builder. You know, if somebody gets hurt and, you know, big tough SWAT ninja guy, and I can pull out the little beanie baby and, you know, make a little joke out of it. But, um, yeah, I recommend a little, a little toy in your emergency kit to make you smile when everything else is going to hell. Uh, the knife fork spoon combo I've settled on a titanium one it's lighter um, this one is a light my fire and it's fairly thick some some titanium you get is so thin it just bends like aluminum foil but this one has survived I have went through a few of the plastic ones the light my fire or whatever brand um, and every one of them broke in half. Um, especially if they get cold, they're in a pack like this, they get sat on or bent, they break. So I've settled on the titanium. I do, however, always file this serrated knife edge because um, I just don't like putting a knife in my mouth when I eat. And I don't need to cut the edge of my mouth. Um, so I recommend that modification. This is a compass, got it in a little bag to keep it from getting scratched up too much. And I don't know if you can see, but it's got a big ass bubble in it. They always, there we go, they always, they always have a bubble in them. Um, it works. You just kind of got to mess around and make sure the bubble isn't like pushing on your, your needle. You can tip it a little bit here and there and get that off your needle and, and it'll work. So for finding your way, Compass comes in handy. If nothing else, just to show you the cardinal directions so you know you're headed generally in the right place if you get confused. More 550 cord, a longer hank. This tool is pretty cool. It is a Leatherman. I told you I quit using a Leatherman, but this one um, is a keeper. It's very small. It's perfect for this kind of pack. And it's not pliers, it's scissors. So having a pair of scissors um, is handy for a lot of things, first aid stuff, um, taking care of your fingernails, whatever. Cut it, this, these are good scissors and they'll cut a lot. They'll cut that inner tube, they'll cut leather. Um, they're really good. This has other tools, of course, um, but the main reason I'm carrying it is for the, um, for the scissors. It also, this, this actually is a uh, Phillips screwdriver, even though it's flat, um, it's shaped so that you can actually use it for a Phillips screwdriver. Um, you wouldn't be able to dig out a tight screw, but just for tightening up something, it's good enough. So I like this. Yeah, it's a keeper. And it's cold and the sun went down and I'm starting to freeze. Signal mirror. Again, for my, especially my line of work, um, we use it for signaling each other. We use it for signaling aircraft when we need a helicopter support. Um, when, again, when I made this video the other day, the sun was shining, and I was able to show how it worked by flashing the uh, camera lens. But alas, the sun is gone. Um, but yeah, get one, use, learn how to use it. Um, it, it, you can use it as a mirror, um, just as a mirror to comb your hair, get, make sure your beard is okay. Um, or, um, example, I was out hunting, I slipped and fell and landed on a stump that had a protrusion that cut my face. And I, I really wanted to look at it. I wanted to see how bad it was. Um, I, I had nothing. To, to, I tried uh, using my glasses and you know trying to see if I could see my face in my glasses but I couldn't so I just had to wait till I got home to see what it looked like it wasn't that bad but anyway it's the compass and um, signal mirror um, are a must for me I have them I always have them okay and here's a spare knife I told you I've got too many knives so I might be able to get rid of a couple of knives and just have this one. 
um, it's one-handed opening it it's not as it's not as good at, as a one-hand closer that's why it's not my main knife but it's really light it's big enough I could probably just carry this in a Swiss Army knife and I'd be fine and this is an old man thing um, it's I've had this for years and it's a magnifying glass with a light just for that those times when you need to see something really small um, and the light still works on it I don't think I've ever changed the battery on this but for digging out splinters things like that again with the splinters I don't know why but all right that's the main pouch Again, I gotta put it all back, otherwise I'll be all right. Last pouch is the little flat one in the back. So I'll tell you a story. Was a, we were called, my partner and I were called to meet search and rescue at a trailhead for a, a hiker, an elderly woman that had fallen, hit her head. Um, they were walking her out. They called us half hour out from the trailhead, said, come meet us there. When we got to the trailhead, um, they were still a mile and a half up the trail. Uh, they weren't moving as fast as they thought. And then the woman um, decided she couldn't walk anymore, and she sat down. And so they asked us to hike up um, to them. So we got our backpacks and my little black bag, and it started to rain. And for... As an oversight, neither one of us had a raincoat. Don't know why, we just weren't prepared. We didn't expect that we were going to be doing any hiking. And I hadn't put my raincoat back in my pack since spring. I mean, since you know, I took it out in the wintertime. Um, and I hadn't put it back in once we got to rain season. So it started to rain. And so I pulled one of these Mylar space blankets off draped it over me, was able to keep dry. My partner had no such luck. He ended up putting a, a blanket over himself, which got saturated and didn't do that good. And once we arrived at the patient, I then it had stopped raining, so I used the space blanket to cover her. So I got two uses out of it. Um, so they are useful. A little right in the rain notebook. Again, you should always have something to write with and something to write on um, for various reasons. Again, just to write down directions, write down phone numbers, write down people's names, um, write in the rain. For this kind of kit, it's good to get one that you've already, <laughs> already used half of it. Simo, good boy. Come here. The dog's on guard. Um, one that's already been half used, um, so it takes up less room. You're not going to be writing novels in the, well, you might, but um, at least not with this kit. Um, and then the little right in the rain, or the little space pen. I can't remember the brand name, but they call it the space pen. And this one is super compact, so it's perfect for this kit. And... This is last but not least. Um, this is just a this bag. Just something came in it. I don't know what. It's not food, Dottie. Hey, watch it. I think the dog just hit the hit the camera tripod. Hopefully, you're still looking at me. Maybe not. We will end up redoing this video again. Anyway, this is just a throwaway bag something came in I don't know what but it's a ziplock and it's waterproof so I'm using it for my medication it's not food Dottie go away so I mentioned before for this small kit 24 hours is all I want stuff in so the first thing is um, loperamide which is for when you get diarrhea diarrhea is bad diarrhea is life-threatening in the apocalypse um, you want to stop that. Constipation won't kill you right away. Diarrhea will. Um, so these are, um, you know, you take two right away, then you take one after each loose stool. Um, so there's 24 hours worth. 
no more. You can have more of that in the larger kit. But I think that's one of the most important um, life-saving medications. And it's over-the-counter. Um, the uh, Pepto-Bismol tablets, same kind of thing. They help with the upset stomach. They also will help with diarrhea. Um, but sometimes you don't eat right in the apocalypse. And you might get an upset tummy. Um, just a uh, variety of band-aids, bandages. This is a prescription medication um, for nausea. Um, this one's expired, but going to get thrown away anyway, so I figured I'd just stick it in my kit. Um, it might come in helpful. And the last thing in here, and the last thing of all, is um, water purification tablets. I used to carry those little glass bottles of stuff, and um, you know, I recently discovered these that come in a, the tablets. There's two tablets, so there's um, eight. So eight liters of water you can purify with this. Definitely plenty for a 24-hour kind of a scenario. There's, these are the Katahdin. Everyone pronounces this Katadine, and I know that there's a mountain in Maine called Katahdin, so I think Katahdin might be the right way to say it, but it might be totally different. I don't know. So that is the end of this video. Um, let me kind of give some context. I have um, lots of different packs. I've got a search and rescue pack, a wildland pack, a medical pack, my own get home bag, or I, uh, also known as I can't get home bag. So that's when I need that. Other ones I'm sure I've forgotten about. And I end up with a headlamp in each one and a medical kit in each one. And, and it's really starting to get um, hard to maintain, hard to keep the stuff, the batteries, you know, good and the medications not expired. So I've, I'm developing this um, system where I have this black bag that has this stuff in it and I can move it from pack to pack. And in the future videos, we'll go into kind of the third level, which will be a backpack that that can go into or in addition to that um, with expanded um, equipment. So until next time, Thanks for watching.